ฮอริซอนจ้าส่งสื่อเรียกสันเดอร์สิสคิวต์แอนิมัลส์บัตเดอะสโลลี่เกตเวิร์สฟอร์ยอร์เฮลท์วัตดิสวอร์ชั่น
on Earth to weaponize venom. According to studies, some shoes are toxic enough to delete 200 mice, and while they're too small to turn a human to a hashtag, it's still capable of causing pain and allergic reactions. Not only that, but some shrews are able to catch a calorie come up underwater, since some are able to smell out prey even while being completely submerged. Yeah, How does that look? They're a mid-sized menace, but too small to be a legit threat to us. That's not going to be true for some of the animals coming. And up next, this bird probably looks no different from something you'd expect in a garden. Except it's only found in the islands of the- I still don't get it, like how can you smell something that's underwater? Like how does the smell travel in the first place? What, it can spread through the water of that particular area and can smell through the water? Is that what it is? Galapagos, and to survive, they've come up with some nasty tricks. They've been nicknamed Darwin finches since they actually helped prove Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Long story short, different finches ate different foods and so developed different size and shaped beaks. One finch evolved to finesse an easy meal by pecking at the skin of bigger birds and drinking the blood that spills out. Are birds even f***ing real? And scientists believe up to 10% of this flying leech's diet is seabird blood, and their favorite victim is a bird called the booby. Don't laugh, it's not funny. <coughs> it's not funny. Popular opinion says that it started with the finches picking parasites off the birds, but after realizing they could live off the marinara that would often leak out, the vampire finches started turning the birds into booby blood banks. They literally became everything they sought to destroy, and they're skilled enough to know how much damage to do. I love this one right here. Because every time we hear about those kind of like tag team animals who just help out of them, we just feel, oh look at that, it just, we just put on emotions to these things, like they're actually helping them out just like a human would help out somebody with emotions and thoughts and everything. No, that's not it, right? It's just like they're, they just evolved in a way that they pick out whatever small insects they can pick out from these big animals. And to us, it feels like it's helping out, in a, in a way it does. But in reality, he's just trying to find food. So in this sense, like, oh, look at the blood is better than anything else. There you go. It becomes a problem rather than helping out. ...to get a ragu reward without doing too much and losing a future victim. Yeah, these birds drink nothing but blood, which they kind of have to since fresh water in the Galapagos is in less supply than lawyers in heaven. But it also means that even though they can fly, Arab would be completely useless to them. But not to you. Because Arab's flavor pods use scent flavors to convince your brain you're drinking whatever pod you chose. Just fill up the bottle, pull the pot to activate, and drink your flavor. And that can be anything from blueberry to peach to cherry to cucumber. Or dirty pennies, you know, if you happen to be this finch. My personal favorite so far has been mango passion fruit, and you can't see it from here, but this is cherry. And remember, there's no calories, no sugar, just elite gray matter gaslight. Because fun fact, 80% of taste is actually dependent on smell. Which is great, because although I've never had a problem getting enough water, I personally have been trying to cut down on all the juices and sodas and stuff, and Arab's a great way of weaning yourself off without going full cold turkey. I've gotten a lot better at it now, but when I was just starting, Arab was the perfect failsafe. And if you think it would be for- that, uh, that part about, you know, taste being a lot of smell, I don't think that's completely true, but for us this is kind of true, because lots of things that we say it's, uh, you know, it's a taste, lots of things that we say it's a taste, but we are actually smelling things. Right? If you eat some something that might have really bad taste, like insanely bad taste, if you just chug it in one go, why does that work? Because you're not ex exhaling, inhaling and exhaling at the time. So air is not passing through. So whatever is in your throat cannot just amplify with the smell, right? So a lot of, you know, a lot of bad things you eat, like, I don't know, uh, I can't remember the name, but whatever bad things you eat, some, you know, food or something, some supplement or something, if you don't breathe during that time, you will not feel as strong because taste is like very specific. Most of them is just aromas and just smell basically. For you, make sure you check out Arab and their assortment of flavor pods using the link in the description. Use the code CASHGEO15 for 15% off. And like I always say, Stay hydrated, my friends. It's just too bad finches don't drink water, otherwise Arab would save more boobies than free mammograms. Not only do they grief bosom birds, but finches will often roll eggs out of nests and crash them in the rocks just for some easy protein. They're not even the only birds in that kind of timing. The New Zealand Kia will use that Swiss Army knife of a nose to cut into sheep and eat the fat right off their backs. And sometimes they freak the sheep out so much they eat themselves off a cliff trying to get away. But at least the Kia and the vampire finch are only harmful to your mental. From here on out, that is the last time that statement will be true because this live-action plush toy is also on the short list of venomous mammals. The slow loris is a Southeast Asian primate armed with toxins that can do very real damage to a human. They have a gland on their arm that produces a chemical that becomes highly toxic when mixed with saliva. So when this imitation lemur sees you and puts its hands up, it's not a sign of surrender, it's a promise to ascend you. We talking straight soul eviction. In 2012, a biologist was bitten by a slow loris and this was him after one hour, and this was Buddy after an hour and a half. 
Since the toxins contain chemicals similar to cat allergens, this venom monkey can trigger anaphylactic shock in people, making it the first animal here that can perform landscape work on your family tree. We used to think this malicious muppet used venom against predators, but it turns out it's for friendly fire. They usually use it in fades with other lorises, and the flesh melting toxins can cause necrosis, meaning the loser loris can lose an eye, a toe, their scalp, and even part of their face. It's so bad that one of the most common causes of loris life retirement is getting bit by a rival. An eight year study done on about 80 slow lorises found that over 20% of them were seriously maimed in conflicts, with some missing eyes, ears, fingers, toes, and more. It's nasty work, and it puts the slow loris on the very short list of animals that use venom against their own kind. And it's no coincidence that one it of It is a primate, right? So it fucking makes sense. The others is next. Two things about platypuses the public should know. One is- Seriously, I mean, <laughs> you see how is that cute? And nowadays, like, obviously internet can save you. But whenever you basically go to any place as a travel, then you realize there's some local animal there. Oh, look at this, isn't that cute with no knowledge? Try to play with it, basically things like that. And just, you know, you can't even think like what other type of damage it would cause before the damage is done. Like, this is insane, man. I mean, it's a primate, like you said, like, you know, like lots of primates, as, at least I can think of, just basically have like, you know, attack each other rather than anything else. They are enemy to themselves. So it kind of makes sense. Is that about six pounds and less than two feet long? They're way smaller than you think. And two is that they're violently venomous. Males have an ankle spur that they use in fights, and like the loris, the consequences of losing are incredibly painful. In 1991, Australian veteran Keith Payne was struck by a platypus, and in his own words, the immediate pain was far worse than getting struck by shrapnel. And it only got worse. The excruciating pain didn't go away after a month, even after he was shot up with morphine. And just how much pain are we talking? Well, according to him, just the weight of a warm towel on this thing caused incapacitating agony. Even 15 years after, he claimed to still be in discomfort, and this guy wasn't sweet or nothing. He actually earned the highest honor of the British Armed Forces for his performance in the Vietnam War. Same guy apparently got folded by a beaver otter cosplaying as a duck. And it's cause platypus venom manipulates nerve cells to trigger pain in a way that can have you down horrendous for weeks, and not even enough morphine to roofie a rhino can bail you out. That's how you know Perry had love for the doof. He could've had a pharmacist every flavor of f***ed up if he wanted to. That's why if you see two male platypi fighting, you'll often see the loser spend days rolling around and scratching. That's a platypus in crippling agony. And you can expect the same symptoms if you F around and find out with the next animal. Even though it's barely- What the fuck? I didn't know about the platypus are that dangerous. God, like, if- look, pain is like very different with other people. Somebody can just ignore pain. Uh, you know, normal, not averagely a normal person, I don't know how to, you know, describe a normal person, can probably ignore certain type of pain that others cannot. Not because, like, they don't have enough resistance or not strong enough to ignore it. Some people are just, like, annoying things, right? Annoying pain, just like it's just too annoying to some people, at, especially people who like something like OCD or something, right? Like, if you're just not completely normal state, like you're normally, and if there's anything changing, even a small pain, a person would go mad, basically, because it's something that they can't stop giving attention to, right? That's what happens with OCD, obsessive. That's the obsessive and compulsion. That's one of the things, right? So imagine this happening to someone who's like, has this OCD type of thing. That would be literally like way too much. Even if the pain is not too much, pain just being there would be too much. In everyday moment, they can't enjoy anything. They won't be able to eat properly because the pain constantly reminds them in whatever part of the body that there's something wrong, something wrong. That's just insane. I mean, this is one thing that I've never seen people talk about, like how pain can affect other people with other problems like this differently. Like how even if you're like you know, really manly or whatever, strong and ignoring pain, if you're OCD, like the annoyance would be much stronger than the pain itself. Barely an inch long. Most people know why playing with a Portuguese man of war is bad for your health. You heard me say most. The man of war is notorious for excruciatingly painful stings that they inflict on thousands oh, a yeah. year. Not only can it cause it's nasty blue, like so, this, yeah. in worst case scenarios, it can trigger severe allergic reactions that can block your airways and suffocate you. Most people know not to touch them, but a lot of those same people would do this. This is Glaucus Atlanticus and more specifically- If something is blue, green, or any bright color, run away. That's one thing I've noticed. Obviously, it doesn't apply to everyone, but, you know, run away. Generally, don't fuck with animals. How about that? Just stay away. Stay away from animals. Oh, isn't that cute? Why do you want to lift it and just pet it? Why do you have to do that? The tried and tested animals out there, like dogs and cats, do that. Specifically, it's a tiny sea slug nudibranch. 
and what these boneless snails do is steal poison from other animals. <laughs> it even like lights up. By eating them, Definitely run away. Toxin, those weird fingertips growing out of their back. It's cultural appropriation, but with poison, and the Glaucus does it to the man of war. Which is why even though a two-inch Glaucus is an overachiever, holding one and getting stung can lead to nausea, vomiting, allergic reactions, and you this... guessed it, pain. In fact, many and it is a him, let's be honest. so concentrated, their sting is actually more powerful than the jellyfish understudy they take it from. Moral of the story, this is what it looks like to put a dent in your family's bloodline. Pro tip, if Why an animal is that oh small goes out of its way to be seen, what touching is wrong it's a with great you? way to see your ancestors. I couldn't find a case of someone being seriously hurt by this tiny assault slug, so it's another example of an animal being too small to truly punish ignorance as often as they could. Completely different from the animal up next, because real talk, if you haven't seen them in person, you would not believe how big they actually get. We all know Steve Irwin, may God rest his soul. And his son and shadow clone, Robert Irwin. Just like his father, Robert got the same animal lover's gene, but there is one animal he's terrified of, and you probably never guess it. According to him, the animal that- Okay, I don't want to be like, you know, too much about shit like this. But if you're gonna go to a show holding your own baby, doing some shit with crocodile, I think somebody should investigate you at that point, right? People have this like, it's his kid, he's gonna do anything What? It's a kid, not a fucking toy or his item. You're a guardian, a parent, not an owner. Right? There's a reason why child protective service exists. This shit is insane. I don't care if your heart is right place. There can always be accident. I, I, I just seeing this panics me. You want to do this shit? Go ahead. But why do your kid with you? Son and sh the most. It has the most smoke for him. It's crazy, right? That's a wombat. And yeah, they really do get that big. And in the words of the spawn of khaki animal Jesus, crocodiles are apparently easier to work with than wombats, since wombats are bloodthirsty psychopaths. And while he probably was exaggerating a little, wombats still ain't the ones to play with. At 25 miles per hour, wombats are fast enough to catch a ticket in a school zone and more than fast <laughs> enough to catch dust a behind. <laughs> they have a tough, cartilage reinforced butt that they use to crush the skulls of their enemies against their burrows. Yeah, getting your life subscription terminated through twerking is a possibility if you're an op to a wombat. But more importantly, they have jaws more than capable of tearing chunks out of your ankles and cats, which is what these furry bowling balls usually go for. Victim Carrie Evans was hospitalized with over 20 bites and lacerations after she was mauled by the evil bulking twin of the quokka. And in 2020, a family nearly got squad wiped by a wombat after the one they were raising for a TV show turned on them, mauling his owner and handing out work to any kin that tried stepping in without prejudice. But he almost folded. Yeah, nothing bits, you know, getting uplifted or having a good day than to watch Castle Jurafik, who's going to tell you about real world event where real world people actually got hurt. Just depress you just right. Four generations of people, and it took a whole axe to get him to act right. And that's not even mentioning the damage an angry fur meatball can do to your car. Moral of the story, if anyone in this man's bloodline don't rock with him, neither do I. Problem is, 99% of the population rocks with pandas and forgets it's still a bear that was made after the printer ran out of color. It's, a bear for it's still a bear, and you can have a panda bear, a yogi bear, or nose candy bear. If it ends in a B-E-A-R, you'll be last seen in an E-R, if you even get that far. So fun fact, gorillas have a stronger bite force than grizzly bears and can crack a coconut, and that's because they spend so much of their time crushing vegetation. I mean, it's a gorilla. That commit Look at those muscles. Day to binging it, giant pandas might have the most underrated bite in the entire animal kingdom. A study was done comparing the bite force of carnivores relative to their bodies okay i still don't know about this so i'm gonna ask it the biggest and baddest gorilla you can think of versus something like cave bear was it cave? i think cave bear is the one who was like the most dangerous amongst the bear wasn't it i think it's extinct now or even grizzly bear who would win i like to think probably bear because they're just like that kind of like fucking dangerous. It's like of all the land mammals you can think of, like bear is one of the most dangerous you can probably think of, right? Like pound for pound muscle would be like tiger as a cat. But I don't know, bear is just like one of those things. Like there's rarely anything you, it, bears would find apart from humans with gun that bears have to like worry about. So I don't know, would gorilla win or would bear win? I don't know. I don't know. Size, Probably using a bad. value known as the bite force quotient. African lions were given a bite force quotient of 124. The jaguar, believed to be pound for pound the strongest cat, earned a 137. And while being smaller than both, African painted dogs flexed a bone crushing 142. And where did giant pandas fall? With a BFQ of 151, giant pandas scored a bronze medal on the bite force scale. Only behind the least weasel and an assault and battery happy looty tune. That's strong enough to rip flesh, tear tendons, How and much is crocodile? Is the strongest. The thing is, it? pandas have all the tools of a predator, but with gerbil software. 
But even though this giant cow rabbit doesn't know how to kill, they can be persuaded into trying and it's usually in zoos. In 2006, a wasted tourist had a chunk of his calf ripped off by a pissed off panda after he tried to pet it. In 09, a tourist fell into an enclosure and also paid a calf tax. Later the same year, another tourist managed to fall into an what? enclosure and the barcode bear nearly turned him into a serial number on a police report, ripping off parts of his foot and elbow. And in 2015, Juan Juan Chi sued up. the government and won for over $80,000. The reason was because officials had chased a giant panda onto his land and a generationally heated bear crushed Guan's leg like a celery stick. And my personal favorite story, a man tried wrestling a biracial black air force to impress a woman and appropriately got partially handled. He wasn't hurt, but the bear bodied him and even shredded his pants in the process, which was the closest he'd get to foreplay that entire day. It's no secret there's no end to the copious amounts of bull effery in the ocean, but there's still some animals people let slide especially if they've been in a movie. One of these fish can do you dirty, and this time the clown's not it. Blue the regal one? blue tang is actually venomous with caudal spines sharp enough- See, see, like, I'm pretty sure somebody told me in the comments one time, I said like, Blue, like, that's not necessarily true or some shit like that. I'm like, come on, man, I don't care. I know Blue is fucked up. I know if I see Blue in any wildlife, I'm gonna run away. And even here, I guessed it, and look at that, the blue one is the dangerous. I mean, there's a trend. If you see anything blue out there in the sea or whatever, run the fuck away, that's venomous enough to slice open skin and when threatened they'll whip their bodies from side to side it's like a junkie waving a broken bottle at you and the venom is not venomous still dangerous are almost guaranteed to get infected and thanks to a certain pixar movie there's at least one kid out there that got a bacterial infection just because ellen degeneres played a fish well not only that but the blue tang is toxic to humans and can cause ciguatera poisoning to the people that eat there you go it an is even toxic. worse mistake when people try it with the next animal because the cute derp guppy is one of the most poisonous <laughs> things that. alive the tetrodotoxin in one pufferfish can bury 30 people. It's about that 12 demonic. times more toxic than cyanide, and there's no actual antidote. All that in Mrs. Puff's X is still considered a delicacy. The fugu blowfish is a prized dish in Japan, but it's also Russian roulette, because if the chef misses by even a tenth of an inch, it's the customer that gets cooked. Here's what would happen if you got poisoned. In about 10 minutes, your mouth would go numb, and you would start to feel dizzy and unreasonably tired. You'd get an overwhelming head. It's a delicacy. I mean, you shouldn't have to say that. Like, everything's a delicacy somewhere. I'm pretty sure there are people who eat insects and cockroaches and things like that. We already know about, like, Wuhan because of the recent things with the bat and all that. What is it called? Wet markets or whatever? Yeah. I'm so glad I'm a vegetarian, right? I, I can't. I can't even think of all this shit. I mean, I don't know, but if, I guess if you're a non-vegetarian, it doesn't feel that far off that pe you know, people eat things like this. But to me, as soon as I think it, like, what the fuck, why would you? I don't know. ...headache to go with nausea, and it slowly get harder and harder to breathe. Eventually, you'd get so exhausted, you'd fall asleep and likely never wake up. <laughs> and until then, you would have been conscious for everything. It's just that you'd be paralyzed it, was and his video. move. The only thing people could do to save you is pump your stomach, put you on life support, and God on speed dial. It's said that up to 100 people get flatlined by Fugu a year, and most of that are people that try it at home. Which means by the time they realize they messed up, they can't run, call, or even scream for help. All they can do is struggle to get air and watch everything turn black like the end of Sopranos. But not even fish fentanyl has a higher body count than the last animal. A lot of people think snails are cute, yet snails are partially responsible for crossing 200,000 names off the census a year. Schistomyosis is a parasitic disease caused by worms with millions affected right now, and those worms are released uh. by snails. The sickness is most common in tropical third world countries with limited access to clean fresh water. With about 700 million people living in at-risk areas, it's one of the most devastating parasitic diseases of all time, only second to malaria. And even if snails aren't the primary suspects, with them taxiing the bug... I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I don't think I've ever met someone in my life or seen somewhere anywhere where I live in India that had any type of parasitic related thing. Right? I mean, people get germs, virus all the time. Malaria is parasitic, but that's the only exception I can think of. Parasitic, I think it's different from germs and virus in the term that they're big and they can actually grow inside of you. Right? People who eat fish can get something like tapeworm, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's just some fucked up shit, right? Like, all this, like, parasitic worm type of shit is just insane. Just thinking something, kind of, that kind of thing is inside you. Eating away or whatever. That's just fucked up. So, I don't know. So, note to self, stay away from snails, apparently. Because they carry this kind of a fucking, yeah. Aren't the most of the parasitic things extinct? I'm pretty sure I watched considered a video based on that. So I guess very rare one. This is going to be rare one or something. I'm pretty sure there was a video I watched about that. And I think it was the video that, you know, because that, all the scandal was about. That was the video, I think. 
But he's just talking about how parasites were extinct mostly. I don't know. Only some of them are up there. At the very least, they're accomplices. Now you see why folks almost put Gary on a shirt. Mad snail disease wasn't a joke. But that's going to do it for this video. Be sure okay. to follow my TikTok and Instagram for more. Yep, there you go. Yep, uh, this was a decent video, not too nightmarish, but just enough to warrant casual geographic, uh, you know, thing, I guess. But yeah, right, well, that was cute animals, but they slowly get worse for your health. Yeah, that title is true, right? <laughs> At first, I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? But now it makes sense. All right, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.